Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is the finale. Yay, the finale. <laughs> okay, so um, this is going to be some really great books. This is a lot of slabs, some raw books, some cool Golden Age stuff. Just a lot of cool stuff in here. But we'll start out with whatever's on top. And it's a slab from my comic shop. And we'll see what it is. Um... I recommend that you watch the other videos in the series because there's been some pretty cool stuff that I've shown. Uh, we're going to start out with, um, if you've been watching all the videos, you'll know that I've been trying to get a complete run of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And one of the books that I needed was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five. And this is a nice high grade, 9.4, not bad. So this is, these early turtle books, uh, you know, I, I really think that the ones that are under number 10 are really, actually some of them are undervalued. Like number one, number two, number three, pretty expensive. Once you get to number four, the price drops significantly. Uh, I mean, I can understand why. Like, so if you look at number one, I believe there was only two to 3,000 printed. Uh, number two is like maybe a little bit more. Then, then after about number five or six, it was like in the thousand, like tens of thousands. Um, but still, you know, I think they're, they, you know, that's still fairly rare. Um, so I think that they're undervalued in many ways. But this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five. And I paid like a hundred bucks for it in a nine six, a nine four. Uh, it's got a wraparound cover too. So you got to see the front and I'll show you the back. Kind of a cool wraparound cover. I like these wraparound covers. And that's one thing I really like about having books slabbed. You can actually see that wraparound really well, uh, where it's front and back. I think it's really cool. It's even got, bo uh, is it bondage? No, it looked like bondage going on there, but it isn't. <laughs> I thought it was like that. I thought that yellow girl was in bondage, but it's just uh, her bracelets. She's wearing bracelets. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, but it's a cool comic. Um, now I have one through five, six, I think I have actually all the way up to like 20 or something like that complete. So, so that's pretty cool. Next one is, I'm hoping this is what I think it is. And if it is, it'll be really cool. Um, this is like going through this whole unboxing. There's a, a set of comics that I know is in here. Uh, that I've been really excited to get. And I've been sort of like, oh, is this going to be the one? Is this going to be the one? Like when I'm opening up these random boxes and I'm hoping it is this one <laughs> where I finally get the comics that I've been looking forward to getting. Okay. And I think it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'll even show you. So um, I actually bought these from Instagram. So... Um, there was a, a vendor on Instagram that was having a huge auction. They were trying to raise some money so that they could go to some uh, convention and buy a bunch of stuff there. And they were just selling a lot of really great Golden Age stuff. And I was like, wow, this is really great. Their big selling feature was um, they had Phantom Lady number 17. And that's actually why I went to their auction. Because I was like, oh, they have Phantom Lady number 17. And I was like, how much are they going to want for it, though? Because it's one of those books that, you know, they can price really high. <laughs> and it was like a 3.0. So it was like a, you know, reasonable grade. It's not like a really high grade or anything like that. But it was a reasonable grade. Like a 3.0 is not, it shouldn't be too expensive. Like I was hoping that they were going to have it for like six to 8,000. Like that was my, that was my hope. <laughs> I was way off. They ended up wanting, I think they wanted over 15,000 for it. And they ended up selling it for 14000 So it was way out of my price range. Uh, but they still had a whole bunch of other books that they were selling that were kind of cool. And um, I ended up buying, <laughs> I ended up buying, like, I ended up spending like about $2,000 with them. Uh, where they just had so many like cool little books and like little lots. So I was like, oh, I, I'll get that. That's really cool. I'll get that too. <laughs> so I'll even show you how much I paid just so you know. Um, this was a lot, this, this was a lot that I got from them and I paid, uh, 275. Originally they wanted 300, but I paid 275 
and you can see Comic Collector Geek. So that's the little label on it. And the lot is um, Land of the Lost. And it was like uh, Land of the Lost number one, which is kind of cool. And I have like, I have a couple issues already from Land of the Lost, but this was kind of a cool set. Um, number two. So I like getting like, you know, the like a little bit of a run going here. So that's number two. And then we got number five. Which is kind of cool. And this book, actually, this next one, number seven is the big key. So number seven is actually the first horror cover. <laughs> it's actually a major key. Um, and, you know, normally this book by itself sells for about $200. So actually, I was quite excited to get another copy of this. So this is my second copy, and I'm, I might sell it or something. I'm not sure what to do with it. But um, it is a major key. So Land of the Lost number seven, the first Golden Age horror cover. And the reason it's a horror cover is you got the little skeleton in the background there. <laughs> That's the reason. So it's the first time uh, EC did horror cover, I should say. It's not the first horror cover of all time, but it's the first EC horror cover. Uh, if you know anything about the history of EC, it was originally a comic uh, company that didn't... Um, wasn't like when the father ran it uh so it was like matt matt Gaines was the owner of the company he, the, he was the original founder of the company and he was a terrible <laughs> terrible entrepreneur uh ec comics wasn't really doing that well and um it was when the son took over uh william Gaines, uh that it really took off and he basically he he hired the best artists he got uh, he made it into horror and sci-fi, and um, it really took off. But before then, it was sort of floundering. They did a lot of Christian books, like Stories of the Bible and stuff like that, and they did Land of the Lost. And But this was the first horror cover that they did. So kind of a cool, kind of a cool book. Okay, um, then they had another lot. So this is another lot. Alex Schomburg a lot. <laughs> so it was just, it was 100 bucks. I knew it was going to be low grade, uh, and it's even lower grade than I thought, but it's a book that I needed. It's Exciting Comics number... number what? I don't know because it's ripped off. Uh, I forget the number. And it's like a 1-0. <laughs> it's like a really low grade. I uh, probably paid too much, actually. I had $100. This was probably too much. It probably could have gotten this for like 80 bucks, but I was excited. You know, sometimes you get that FOMO, and actually, somebody else, like, two seconds after me, like, it was a claim auction. Two seconds after me, somebody else bid on it. So I ended up winning. Um, but it is a great Alex Schomburg cover. It's, it's sad that it's in really rough shape. But um, really great book still. Uh, and it's one that I needed for my collection. Now, this one actually is kind of interesting. Originally, they wanted $1,000 for it. See, one k. I convinced them to go for 800 and it is a really great comic. It is one that I always wanted in my collection. And it's Namora number one. So this is a really big book. Uh, this is kind of the big book for this unboxing, actually. Because this is just such a r really rare comic and just a really great one to have. So Namora number one. And I'm a big fan of Namora. It's a really great cover with her. Um... Almost an homage to her first appearance, which is in um, Marvel Mysteries number 82, where she's kind of jumping out of the water. Um, so it's just a really great cover. I really like that one. Okay, so that was my big exciting one. I was super excited about that. Now I got some more lots from them, and that's what's inside here. <laughs> so I got a bunch of comics from them. Uh, that was the big one, though. Um, but there was a bunch more that I did get from them. And a lot of the stuff that they had, oh, I'll, you'll see, it's like a bunch of lots. Um, they would they would basically group up a bunch of EC stuff and low grade. All of it was like really low grade, um, but you know, for me, like if it's 
if it's affordable and, and low grade, I don't mind, <laughs> you know? So I paid, like, they wanted 100. I, I offered them 80. They said, sure. So I was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, so basically, um, this was an interesting lot. It has Haunt of Fear, number 15. So there's a, this is three comic lot. So it's Haunt of Fear, number uh, 15. Kind of a cool, you know, guy coming out of the coffin cover. You got the Crypt Keeper, Vault Keeper, and the Old Witch as well. Kind of cool. And then... As a bonus, uh, it also came with a couple uh, coverless Wonder Woman. Uh, so Sensation Comics number 101. And even though they're coverless, they actually don't sell for that. Like, they're actually fairly expensive, even though they're coverless. Uh, I would say about 50 bucks kind of range, uh, usually is what you can sell them for, even though it's, you know, incomplete. Uh, it would be considered a 0.3 grade. And then uh, Wonder Woman number 60. So, yeah, nothing nothing too exciting. But, you know, I thought they were kind of nice uh, bonuses to that lot, even though they're coverless. I don't necessarily like the coverless part, but um, it was nice to uh, get those books. Um, I actually have, you know, a better copy of number 60. Okay, then there's another lot. Now, I'm going to get the tape off of it. One sec here. Okay, this one's all stuck together. And it's got tape all over it, so I'm trying to remove the tape. It's a little hard to get the tape off here. Okay, so I managed to get all the tape off. And this one I got for $80. And it was two um, EC Comics. We got Crime Patrol number 12, kind of a cool Crime Patrol. I believe this is a Johnny Craig cover, so kind of a cool Johnny Craig cover. And then we got, um, and I paid $80 for the two, so I thought 40 bucks each, can't go wrong. Another Johnny Craig cover. This is Shock Suspense Stories number 11. So I like getting EC books. I don't have many EC books in my collection, but anytime I can pick them up, I, you know, I don't mind picking them up for a good deal. So 40 bucks each, I think that's a good deal. Um, you know, the funny thing is, uh, like, EC comics are not that rare. <laughs> like, they're pretty common. There's, like, they, they massively printed them, and uh, they were very popular at the time. So, um, but I still like, they're still popular in my mind, so <laughs> uh, I always like to pick them up. So yeah, so that's uh, those two. And this one's a really interesting one. Um, it's in really bad shape, uh, to tell you the truth. But I didn't pay much for it. Um, this one is a really interesting one. So this is Pep Comics number one. <laughs> like it's, a, it's coverless, and it's also missing a few pages as well. Um, yeah, so it is just, it is like a really bad shape one, but it's, yeah, it is what it is. It's Pep Comics number one. It's kind of a cool, iconic comic, uh, and to get it like in any grade to me is kind of cool. Like, you know, even like, these are the kind of comics that you could probably just take the pages and sell them individually. And you'd probably get like a hundred dollars a page. <laughs> like, it's like, it's kind of that level, um, because it is such an iconic comic um you know it, it's the one that launched archie uh it was in pep comics 22 that you got the very first appearance of archie and uh, a lot of these early pep comics had really great covers where it's like them fighting against the nazis and stuff like that so this is a really great uh series so that's Pep Comics number one. <laughs> like, kind of cool. I paid 175 You can tell me in the comments below, did I pay too much for Pep Comic number one? Um, I don't know. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. Um, you know, maybe I paid too much. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, it's a, if it was complete, it would be a pretty expensive book. Um, but uh, it's very incomplete. Um, now, this one I paid a bit, a bit more for. Um, 
I paid 150 for this. And again, more uh, EC comics. They had a pretty good collection of EC stuff. Um, this is a Haunt of Fear, number number six. So another one of these like casket and the guy coming out of it kind of thing. So that's Haunt of Fear number six. And I didn't realize it is missing a bit from the centerfold, which is kind of a little bit disturbing, but oh well. Uh, but this one is the one actually I was more interested in. This is the reason I bought the lot was, I thought this was a really great cover. <laughs> this is Tales from the Crypt number 44. And it's a low grade, but it is a very great cover where you actually get the guillotine smashing down on the guy. Um, I think it's quite cool. So Tales of the Crypt number 44. Okay. And so that is that lot. And then we get one more set of books from them. I believe this is it. So one more set of books from that same vendor. Let me just open it up. I need my knife. Okay, so this is the last set of books. And this is some, it got some cool stuff. So the reason I went to the auction, as I said, was to get Phantom Lady. I wanted Phantom Lady number 17. It is a book that's mentioned in the Seduction of the Innocent. It is one of the keys that I'm, one of the grails for me to get for the Seduction of the Innocent collection. But it was just out of my price range. It was a book that just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> it was uh, uh, a book that was just out of my price range and I had to pass on it, which is, Kind of sad, but um, I did manage to pick up Phantom Lady, a different one from them. Uh, this is Phantom Lady number 22, and I thought it was just a really nice presenting comic. It is incomplete, so it's a 0.5 grade, um, but uh, it, is, it is a really great cover for Phantom Lady. Um, I paid $400 for it. <laughs> like... Even in a low grade like this, these Phantom Ladies actually command fairly big uh, money. And especially if the cover is really great presenting like this one is. It is pretty solid, except for the fact that it is missing the, the centerfold. Um, so just a really great comic, um, Phantom Lady. It wasn't the one I wanted, but it is a Phantom Lady. So, hey, it's a close, <laughs> a close one. A lot of their stuff was low grade. It was kind of a sad thing. Um, but um, they did have some cool stuff. It was just all low grade. Okay, so next next lot. I paid 200 or it was $200 that they wanted and I paid 150 and it was a lot of books. So I'm gonna show you what's inside. I thought this was a pretty good lot for the price. Ah, uh, this, they taped it so well. This painter's tape sometimes works really well, sometimes sticks too much. Let's see if I can get it off on this side. All right, I think I got it. Ah, it's really sticking to me. <laughs> it doesn't want to let me go. Okay, so we got the painter's tape off. And I'll show you the lot. So 150... It's not a perfect lot. As I said, a lot of the stuff that they had was low grade. And this is kind of an example of that low grade. This is Haunt of Fear number 13. And you can see that's missing a big chunk <laughs> right there. Um, so I thought that, you know, it's, um, who is the artist? It just says Ghastly. I don't know who it is. Um, just kind of a cool Haunt of Fear. And then we got... Uh, Shock Suspense Stories number um, number 14. This is kind of a classic uh, cover with, uh, with the guy getting shot through the window. Actually, this one was mentioned, I believe, in... Um, oh, in one of the uh, Reader's Digest uh, books where they were talking about how comics were being really harmful to children. 
and they mentioned this book because you know you got this guy getting shot <laughs> like you know brutally on the cover so this was kind of a key book in terms of ending the golden age so kind of a key book um so shock suspense stories number 14 sadly in a low grade believe it or not though i have a higher grade version of that cover comic so i'll probably sell it okay one sec here then there was two more books inside the lot. Ah, really hard to get the tape off though. <laughs> it's just driving me nuts. Okay, once I get this piece, last piece of tape off, I'll be good. Okay, and then they had uh, a really good Hetty Deville cover. This is Hetty Deville number thirty-two. This is kind of a nice good girl art cover. And that's number thirty-two, Hetty Deville. And then. They actually had this really nice, <laughs> this is really, like all their stuff was low grade except for this one comic, which was a bit better. Um, this is Marvel Family number 20. And it's actually in a really nice grade. The, there's a little bit of roughness along the spine, but actually it's really sharp and like no real flaws with it except for that. So um, Marvel Family. And it's just a really nice, Golden Age um, Marvel Family, number 20. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we got some more slabs, and then we'll wrap up this video. And um, as I said, those were the comics I was super excited about because, uh, you know, it's a lot of Golden Age stuff that I thought was really cool. I really like to get more EC in my collection, so I was quite excited about getting those. Okay, this is a book. Oh, my goodness. Uh so this is a book that I've been trying to get for the longest time. Like, I don't know why I never had this book. It's not a hard book to find. There's like, they printed like millions of this book, but I never had it in my collection. And it's one that I, I wanted to get before the TV series came out. This is X-Men Adventures number one. This book is not rare. It is not hard to find. I just seem to have the worst luck getting it. So I finally got it in my collection. Didn't pay much for it. Um, and it is um, based on the animated TV series. So basically this is the, the book that, um, you know, was based on the first animated series for X-Men. And now they're gonna come out with um, a new X-Men series. And so this book has become slightly hot again. And um, so yeah, um, so it's a Steve Lytle cover as well. I don't know who that is, but you, know, you can see the back. But kind of a cool comic uh, to get. You know, not a super high grade, actually, but, you know, kind of still a cool comic. You know. Okay, uh, next one. Okay, let's see. Okay. This is just... Um, a cool cover. <laughs> I just really like this cover. Um, this is, so I'll show you, I'll take it out of the bag. Just a really great cover. I just like this cover. Um, this is Gwenpool Holiday Special number one, and it's like a variant issue where you got Gwenpool looking very, very sexy, and you got uh, another Gwenpool in the background there. Or this is you know, uh, Gwenpool, what is she doing here? I swear, I thought it was just a one-time thing. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So then we got, um, and it's in the 9-8, so it's a really good uh, grade. Uh, this is the Midtown Comic, Midtown Comics exclusive. And I just thought it was such a great cover. I believe it's uh, J. Scott Campbell that did the art too. So it's really a great cover. I really like it. I just, I like these sexy, you know, J. Scott Campbell, he's one of my, one of the artists that I really like. Uh, he, he just does these really sexy girls. I think they're awesome. So yeah, so that was Gwen Cool, uh, Gwen Pool, uh, special number one. Okay, and got three more slabs to do, I believe, or four more slabs, actually. And... Oh, hopefully I can get this one out. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so this one is a series actually really quite good. I, I've been reading this series lately. Um, there's, I think it's only five in the series. It's uh, Erratic. It's one that was mentioned by Reggie Clex. I thought I'd check it out. And it's a really great read. Um, so basically Erratic kind of reminds me of Peter Parker in many ways. Uh, same kind of teenage story. You know, he's like 15. He's got, you know, he's got that, you know, 15-year-old world problems, you know, uh, where he's basically like, you know, a bit of a loser kid, you know, picked on. His brother's the big jock guy, you know, and he's the loser brother, you know, he's, and, um, but he does have a superpower. However, his superpower only lasts 10 minutes per day. <laughs> so, and it's erratic. Um, so it's, it's just kind of a cool story where he's ultra powerful for 10 minutes and that's it um it's kind of a cool story it's one of five uh and this is the first appearance of erratic and just kind of a cool cool story um i enjoyed it i, I enjoyed the little series i haven't finished it yet i have two more books to read um but yeah okay so that's that one and then we got another slab that is really wrapped. Let's see, I might have to slice this one because it is very well wrapped. Just looking for my... Let's see if I can get it out. Uh. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. My knife is super sharp. <laughs> it went right through the bag into the actual plastic, but not into the slab, but just into the plastic bag under the, the protective slab. Good thing there was that plastic bag. Um, this is just a cool cover. I like the cover. This is a cover by. Um, this is uh, You Promised Me Darkness, and it's just, just this really cool, ominous cover. Um, and it's by uh, John Gallagher. John Gallagher cover. I just thought it was a really great, almost remind me of like um, Lovecraft or something like that. I just thought it was a cool cover. So that's why I picked it up. Purely a cover by. And I just thought, hey, it's in the 9.8. Looks, presents really well. Really cool. And it's this gold back. <laughs> it's really weird. So yeah, so um, just a really cool like floating eyeball thing going on. I thought it was a really interesting looking cover. Reminds me of Lovecraft or something like that. So, and we got two more slabs and then we're done. So, and I know the last slab is a big one. <laughs> so just so, wait for that last slab. So we got another cover by, I just like this cover. I thought it was really cool. This is Walking Dead um, 101. And it is the, what is it called? Um, the Foxy Brown variant. I just thought it was really cool. It kind of has that uh, black black exploitation video a movie kind of look to it. Uh, so if you're not familiar with black exploitation, it's like uh, movies like Shaq, uh, Foxy Brown. Um, There's a whole bunch of movies from the '70s that were really trying to target um, the black community, and they were really great. Actually, really great movies, <laughs> like just uh, just over the top violent with like sort of a kung fu feeling to them and they'd just be really really fun uh so yeah this is um the foxy brown version so you got michonne and she's like you know doing that whole foxy brown kind of style and uh the walking dead and it just captures that kind of uh 70s vibe for uh black exploitation so that's, i thought that was kind of cool oh sadly oh my goodness i didn't realize this book didn't survive the travel. So sadly, it got cracked all through here. Oh, shoot. And this is such a hard comic to get too. Really rare comic, believe it or not. Oh, sadly, the, the case is completely cracked. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, shoot. I didn't notice that. Oh, well. Uh, oh, well. So that's kind of sad. A little bit sad on that one. 
Uh, so that was the only comic that was damaged in the travel. I don't believe that was Thackeray's fault. I believe that that was the way it was shipped by the, the person that sent it because it was just in a, it was in very poorly shipped. It didn't make sense the way they shipped it. It was just in a, like a, it wasn't even protected. No bag and no board. It was just like by itself. Stupid, stupid vendor. <laughs> didn't send it properly. Okay. This next one is a really great comic. This is Adventure Comics number four, uh, 247. And this is the first appearance of the League of Superheroes. And it's the first appearance of Saturn Girl, Lightning Boy, and Cosmic Boy. So uh, just kind of a great, um, great book. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of these early leagues you know, not Justice League, but it is League of Superheroes. So, you know, kind of cool. And it is like such a hard book to get. Um, it is restored, but because it's restored, I was able to negotiate a pretty good price for it. Uh, it is definitely a hard book to get. Um, and it's usually one that's very, very pricey. Even in this grade, very, very pricey. It was expensive. This was the most expensive book uh, in the ones that I'm showing today by far. Um, just a really hard book to get. So, but I finally got it. And it completes a little collection that I've been forming. I'll show you my collection. I'm just going to show you a little collection that I created that are homages to it. So we got Adventure Comics 322, which is the <laughs> Legion of Super Pets, which is an homage to it. And then we got Superman... Um, 147 which is a, another homage to it where it's the league of evil super villains it's a you know super league of super villains so that's kind of cool and then we got the book that started it all <laughs> this one so i finally got it I, i've been wanting this book for a long time and it's just a really cool book to get i show it well and saturn girl is actually kind of a cool character by the way so that is the finale and we're finally done there's a big pile of stuff <laughs> over here it's just like amazing how much uh wrapping there was it was half wrapping inside that big box so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed this series of of, of comics um uh, unboxings so check out my other stuff i uh, check out my other unboxings because i always show some pretty cool things i believe and i hope you enjoy watching these videos so thanks again for watching bye for now